face that this world has forgotten. Hmm, what is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to an episode of Who Was Really Bitter. And this week, we're gonna look upon the cow Pokemon. No, not Miltank, I would save her for later. However, we have two horned beasts that really, really are apart with one another. The first one being called, called Tauros from Generation 1, the undisputed OU King from Generation 1, and which I would consider the NUT King of Generation 6, versus Buffalons, a Pokemon that was introduced in Generation 5. However, it has had quite a different niche around it, and actually these two are on par with one another as superb wall breakers, and it's up to me to go over course their type, which is here that are normal, but also the move pool ability and working theme to find out which one of these two monster cows are really better. And since both Pokemon represent normal typing only, I will just say about normal typing that it's known to be a very, very neutral typing, of course, as it's normal, immunity in Ghost, and we to find him very, very basic, not necessarily the most defensive, but at the same time not really that weak either. The fighting stab is something that should be considered when you go for a matchup. That said, we'll go over Tauros first, since it was introduced first, and overall, Tauros is what I would say a very, very complete Pokemon that is web 75 in HP, 100 in attack, 95 in defense, very low special attack at 40, special defense at 70, and the speed tier, which is fairly high, considered, of course, what the Pokemon is, is 110. This turned this Pokemon to one of those really, really speedier, hard physical hitters, and of course, with a 100 attack set, which is fairly average, a bit of above the, I would say, strong sign, but the speed tier really just stated as something else, and which, which makes Taurus overall really, really bulky for a Pokemon that is considered a wall breaker or a possible sweeper. But I say that a bit on the weak side, which is something we're going to, of course, go over. So when it comes to the abilities of Tauros, one rule has mentioned Anger Point, even though it is a useless ability to some extent in singles, it is semi-usable in VGC, where if you get critted, you get to plus 6 in your attack directly, which is, as I said, a niche at best, but it is a possibility. However, Intimidate is something that actually stands out a little bit more, because due to the mixed bulk of Tauros, of course 75 in HP and 95 in defense, this Pokemon could defensively check Pokemon with Intimidate, mainly because lowering opponent's stats always are significant and consider your typing and not being weak to that many things, primarily only of course fighting, you will be able to check a few physical threats, which is always going to be useful. However, that's not why I use Tauros. While Tauros is bulky, as stated before, it is a speed threat with an average to a bit above average attack stat. Share force results that it means that any attack that have a secondary effect will lose that secondary effect and give a further free boost to that attack, basically making it a possible half stab move, which is great. And what even makes that better is that also secondary effects towards the like of life orb will not be accounted for if you use a move with secondary effects, making Taurus a very, very hard hitting Pokemon all of a sudden with a 60% boost till is already fairly high attacks at 100. So what this allows Tauros is not only its physical move to be more hard hitting, but also getting those 60% boost to a possible special attack with Life Orb and Shea Force boost in mind. While special attack is fairly low, if you hit something super effectively with a 60% boost in that attack stat, we will have a pretty useful special attack stat with of course high stab moves in mind, making Tauros a very, very interesting threat in the meta, even though it is one that I would say is quite versatile and diverse, it's very clear that it has a very, very good focus, and that is actually just punishment and punishment alone. Tauros Moopool, however, is maybe not the most diverse, however, they are all relevant to that extent. It, being a Pokemon of Generation 1, it is very, very weird to see a Moopool that isn't as broad as they usually are, considered that all the tutor moves you can get from previous generation. Tauros doesn't necessarily have that, a lot of things that he did get was resolved with Generation 5 actually. Till then, few Generation 3 to 5, Tauros was, well, underwhelming and actually did get a few resolvements with Shea Force and a few moves in mind. So with that said, we have Pursuit. Pursuit is always going to be a good thing, being able to actually catch and actually pursue trapped Pokemons. While it isn't Stab, it still is a relevant move to have. Body Slam, your bread and butter. Uh, definitely should be stated here that Body Slam does its secondary effect 
is the one you want to use with Shear Force. While the Rock Climb is stronger, it is not mentioned here because of that doubtably annoying accuracy of 85%. So Body Slam 100% and boom, it does do strike a lot of damage. Mimic, trust me, it's a weird option, but being able to snag Mimic and a Mimic move is very good. For example, if you want to capitalize on actually grabbing Mac Punch to be able to retaliate, <laughs> Taurus can actually pull that off. And since we lack Fighting Stab, this is something Taurus actually are needing. We also have Curse. Curse is the only real set of move of Taurus. While it has a workup, trust me, Curse is where it's at. So if the one Curse, if you're fully speedy, you will still be able to outspeed base 80 Pokemon. So it's not necessarily the worst trade off. However, it is probably not the most ideal if you want to capitalize on the speed on Taurus. Then we come to the very interesting special pool. Due to, as stated before, the Shear Force boost, it means that Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Thunderfire, Blast will be boosted by the Shear Force, and that is awesome. I should say that Taurus do get Solar Beam. You don't want to use that, but it does get it. We also have Surf, but at the same time, it's not boosted there. However, then it comes to just the overarching filler moves. We have Earthquake, we have Stone Edge, Wild Charge. These are not boosted by Share Force, however, they are hard hitting. But what you do want to use with Tauros and Share Force are Rock Slide, Zen Headbutt, Iron Head, or Iron Tail. Overall, I would say Tauros is close to having that perfect coverage. All you basically need is Body Slam and usually Fire Blast to be able to deal with Steel type. Then if the rest comes out of preference. What I do really recommend is Zen Headbutt to be able to hit Fighting Types and Poison type. And of course, Iron Tail or um, Iron Head or Tail is really what you're gonna go for if you wanna hit uh, either Flying Rock types or Fairy types, which could be a potential threat. But overall, the sky is the limit on Taurus. You can be very specific. While it isn't as diverse in the Smoke and Tears, mainly because of that five move slot issue in a league concept towards this shine a lot more mainly because the precise move pool for any matchup makes this pokemon very very hard to be dealing with head on and since it's so unpredictable due to the broad move pool it gets due to share force it will always remain a really really strong threat towards any matchup we just deal with and which overall makes Tauros while a lower tier Pokemon is still very, very good one at that, I myself use it quite a lot in the highest tiers and I've never been disappointed. The speed tier really does allow it to maneuver really, really well and attacks that, while as I stated before, kind of low average at best, is very, very hard hitting with the sheer force boost in mind. So with that said, how could Buffaloant even compete with such a complete Pokemon? And well, it can. It most certainly can. Because Buffalant is definitely harder hitting than Tauros and bulkier than Tauros. We have 95 in its HP, 110 this time around in its attack, 95 in defense, the same defense there, same special attack at 40, 95 in special defense, so 20 raise there. However, Buffalant is most definitely slower. 55 base speed is definitely on the slow side, however, with the extra bulk and more attack, this is nothing to be trifled with, if anything, Buffalant do stand out due to that immense natural bulk it gained. When it comes to the abilities of Buffalant, it really are a few things that stand out. First and foremost, Reckless. Getting that extra 25% boost in your um, recall moves are very, very good. And not only that, with 110 attack, it really shows that this ability just held out quite a lot, making Reckless one of the more useful abilities for this Pokemon. However, the other two aren't bad here. Sap Zipper, getting a complete immunity grass type moves and getting actually a 50% boost in your attack by of course one stage. Yeah, that's fairly good and consider the amount of grass that we could be facing, it could also define and heavily check the likes of Superior for example. And of course the last is a Soundproof. While not the most useful, having immunity in Parting Shot and Hybrid Voice are always helpful and in a league concept, while situational, it could be very, very specific to a certain matchup. So overall, Buffalo's abilities are very, very, very versatile. While it isn't as useful as I would say as the Share Force all, they're still very, very much so that I think Buffalo has overall the better abilities in all in all together, consider of course the lacklustering anger point from Taurus side. But a Pokemon is only as good as, of course, its move pool allows it to. So, yeah, look at the move pool on Buffalo, and you'll see that it is pretty much the same as Tauros. There really aren't that much thing going on. However, 
and there are other aspects towards Buffalo that does make it more relevant. Where well, first and foremost, pursuit, awesome. Head charge is your bread and butter. It does sting a lot harder than a sheer force body slam is doing. So definitely one of the more interesting fashion move. Focus energy, trust me, this is a move that could be used. Getting those critical hit naturally are very good towards this Pokemon. Mega Horn, yeah, it's a very strong move. 120 base bug move is a very very good to have only because of the lies of actually psychic which is our very very bulk in general being able to capitalize on that and doing super effective damage towards them are always good and with c moves in mind it only actually shines even further soul stance yeah this pokemon gets soul stance this is something a really strong edge it has over tauros because it does mean it can set up and do even more damage buffland also get earthquake definitely don't have to define that being able to hit super effectively through the like off rock and um grass i was going to say but no rock and poison is what i'm getting at and steel wild charge one of the other moves that are boosted by reckless and being able to do super effective damage towards water types clearly always relevant smart strike just a filler move uh, rock tomb filler air lace as stated filler stone edge very very relevant being able to hit the flying types iron head yeah same thing there we also have surf here the reason i want to mention that is because both rhydon and golem is Fritz and always having Surf is good to be having, however 40 in special attack, maybe not so much. Uh, Amnesia and Cotton Guard in this game in Ultra Sun and Moon, so it also can set up defensively on both sides now. Belch, very good C move, even though it's a special move. Poison Jab, really really strong filler. Super power, yeah, this Pokemon gets a fighting move and that's a, definitely a strong edge it has over Tauros. It also gets Sin Headbutt and it has Outrage, which is something that Tauros gets too, but I think it's more relevant on Buffaloons. Overall though, I would say that Buffaloons has a stronger physical move pool than Tauros. It is clearly very, very teetered towards that aspect. And with 110 attack and Sword Stance and C moves in mind, Buffaloons is a superb tank that I don't see too often, consider what this Pokemon brings to the table. And it is a very, very strong threat and definitely is on par, if not even better than Tauros. The way I see it, Buffaloons has a lot of things that makes it great. While the speed tier isn't necessarily the best one, it's mixed bulk of 95 cross the board and 110 attack. This allows it to play a very, very hard hitting wall breaker and abilities just allow it to be a lot more functional in a lot of the areas than Taurus can be. Reckless, very helpful. While I would say the Reckless is kind of lacklustering in the aspect that it only has two moves boosted by this ability. However, Head Charge is definitely a strong move. That really unfortunate, we don't get Jump Kick. Sap Super, yeah, it's a very, very strong niche. And together with Lies of Sam Proof, there really, really are a lot of aspects to consider Buffalo to be a very, very strong tank for any team. And consider what it brings to the table with, as I said before, this mixed bulk. Buffalo stands out as one of the more superb wall breakers that actually might be a bit of a forgotten game, actually, if you ask me. So what this boils down to is whether or not Toro's speed tier, actually, I should say, is more interesting than Buffalo's overarching theme with bulk and harder hitting moves. Toro's clearly hits hard, it, it's no doubt about that. Tauros has the potential of hitting everything super effectively really, really easily. And with, of course, Share Force in mind and Light Force, even special attacks becomes frighteningly scary. But Buffaloons has the broader move pool in the physical side. And consider what the, both these Pokemon are. The physical aspect is to be considered here as the more relevant one for whether or not these Pokemon are a threat or not. And not only that, Buffaloons has Sword Stance, which only enforces that aspect. Buffalo can be extremely scary, and considering the mixed bulk, as I said before, 95 across the board, it is really, really to be presumed that Buffalo here is the better. But what I think brings it down, and I really, really mean brings it down, is that it heavy hits that this get are moves that are based in recall of this Pokemon, and with the stamina it does get being forced to not capitalize on that and of course missing also recovery no slack off nothing like that it does make stamina on buffland hard to reserve well while it is a bulky pokemon it falls fast because it can't get back 
and Tauros, while it lacks the bulk, it is still speedier and aren't necessarily hit in the first place. And of course, with Intimidate in mind, there are aspects to Tauros to make it bulkier and more versatile towards more matchup. Buffland is superb across the board, but I don't think it gets enough moves to get boosted by Reckless. So even though it has the setup, it just lacks the punch to be in the game for a long time, which is something Tauros has due to the extra speed and being able to KO Pokemon head on due to the Share Force boost in mind and a special pool it does get. But I really think this matchup is tough. It is basically, like if, like I said, if Bufflin got something that could make use out of its reckless ability and actually being able to recover, Bufflin would have been a much, much stronger threat. I even would consider that had it gotten itself like a Dilty or a Tonomize or even a Rock Polish, something like whatever, you no know, polished Afro is what I'm trying to say then maybe Buffalo would have been a lot more scarier because it has the scarier move pool, I presume. The issue is that it's sadly too slow to actually make good use out of it, while Tauros isn't the, or are more versatile with special pool in mind, but what matters here is that Tauros at least are able to pull his roll effortlessly due to 1 in 10 base speed and being able to hit very, very hard with Barn Slam and, of course, and have a Rock Slam whatnot. These, these are strong moves and making Tauros very, very strong as a board wall breaker and of course sweeper so overall Tauros wins here because i would call it more reliable i definitely think bufflin has good things going for it but the issue is none of them are necessarily resolved in a good way that i could state makes it a better pokemon at Taurus because it isn't Taurus is a superb pokemon and the speed here is pretty much the reason because of that bufflin sadly falls in a bulky part and that's why it can't compete towards the likes of Tauros. So, with that said, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm sorry for it being a day late, but yeah, I had a great fun actually recording this. I'm really glad to talk about Buffalo. And while I'm a great fan of Tauros and I knew the outcome before even starting, I really want to talk about Buffalo because this is a Pokemon that I definitely feel most people sadly aren't using. And it's not a bad Pokemon. It has issue, however, and uh, the issue is that its bulk isn't really in conjunction with its <laughs> with his overarching physical theme, which is something that holds the Pokemon back, but it's definitely not a bad Pokemon. So with that said, guys, thank you for, of course, watching. What do you guys think about this matchup? And of course, join us next week for this matchup. <laughs>